Today we have some pretty wild stories, starting with Nvidia's next-gen card getting delayed, AMD's wild new GPU naming, it looks like melted GPUs may not be user error, and AMD's working on an even better RX 9000 card? Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, in a recent story I actually covered the leaked embargo dates for Nvidia's upcoming RTX 5070 Ti. We're talking the hub stocking date January 17th, MSRP reviews on February 19th, non-MSRP reviews the same day as launch which is February 20th. And in that video I discussed the fact that while the regular 5070 non-TI is still listed as releasing in February, you can see on shelf date in February, with the fact that they didn't already have a date or at least some information on embargoes lifting, things like that, it definitely seemed odd. Well, we now know the reason. As you can see right here in a new tweet by Resident Leaker, this is someone who's certainly gotten many leaks right in the past, Mega Size GPU, you can see that he claims the RTX 5070 will be delayed. Instead of February, it's going to be on the shelf in early March. And you know what else is coming out in early March? Well, AMD's 9070 XT. And of course, that's not too much of a surprise. Nvidia is of course waiting to see exactly what AMD does with their 9070 XT before they kind of decide how they're going to respond. And AMD has done this in the past. I'm sure Nvidia has plenty of times as well. So like I said, not too much of a surprise. It's obviously a smart move in many ways, but still it does kind of suck that we're talking March instead of February. With that said, don't forget that the 5070 Ti, if these leaks are correct, is set for launch in February. But first, you've only got until the end of the month to save big on your PC parts with Micro Center's Build Your Own Month. It's where they offer great deals all month on PC components to build your ultimate rig. And they sponsored today's video so I can tell you all about it. Also, if you've never been to a Micro Center, you're in luck because the company is giving away a free 128 gig flash drive when their new Santa Clara, California store opens. Sign up to get it by visiting my link in the description below. And for everyone else, you've got to check them out. Micro Center is a massive store that carries everything you could want for your build. From tons of motherboards to CPUs, GPUs, even PC cases, not to mention custom water cooling parts. Basically, it's the perfect place for PC enthusiasts. Luckily, if you haven't been, they're opening new stores all the time. So check out their deals down in the description below. And if you're near their upcoming store, pick up a free 120 gig flash drive in the description as well. And next up for today, once again, AMD is doing some pretty wild stuff with their naming schemes. Don't forget that not too long ago, they released Ryzen AI. Talk about being on the nose. Now, don't get me wrong, both Intel and Nvidia both have their issues with naming schemes. Intel's Core Ultra can definitely get a little confusing here and there. Plus, Nvidia has TI and Super and TI Super. Seems like they really just don't know which one they want to use, but that AI one was definitely right on the nose. Well, looks like they're doing some wild stuff yet again. If you remember just recently, I discussed the fact that they launched the RX 7650 GRE, and that originally stood for Golden Rabbit Edition. And that's, of course, because it was a China-specific GPU, and it was the year of the rabbit. Well, it's not the year of the rabbit anymore, and AMD has been launching some of these GPUs in the US and other countries as well. Well, to rectify this with their new 7650 GRE, they've actually changed the name to Great Radeon Edition. <laughs> I, I mean, it really just feels like they're just taking the GRE and just fitting it into the first thing they think of. I mean, I don't know, this one's just pretty bad. Who cares? We know what it means, GRE, in the sense that we know, you know, 7650, we know like where it's typically at in the lineup. But why not just take off the GRE or completely change it all together? I mean, I get what they were doing with the First one that they launched, I believe that was a 7900 GRE. I don't know. This one's just pretty bad to me. But of course, let me know what you think down in the comments below.
And next up, in a follow-up to my last video where I went over the fact that NVIDIA's RTX 5000 cards are still melting, even after NVIDIA claimed that the problem was solved. Well, it's now looking like the problem isn't actually user error. Remember that we were originally told that the issue was caused by not inserting the connector all the way? Well, it looks like that may not be the case, at least for the RTX 5090. This story originally comes from a new video by Der Bauer where, believe it or not, the first case of a 5090 cable melting was actually sent to him. You can see he lives nearby and they sent him the 5090 Founders Edition, the cable that melted, as well as the Zeus PSU. And from that, what he decided to do was actually replicate what would happen. He used his own liquid-cooled RTX 5090 as well as a Corsair 12 VHPWR cable and he ran Fermark tests for a few minutes. Now, Fermark is of course a very demanding test, but we're talking in just under 5 minutes. The cable connector started heating up pretty wild. You can see on the PSU side, temps reached 150 degrees Celsius, while on the GPU, they were close to 90 degrees Celsius. And you can actually see it with the thermal imaging camera. As you can see, a lot of the heat is aimed at just a couple cables. You can see it better right here. Pretty much all the heat looks to be coming from just two cables. Now, you might be thinking, okay, well, this cable clearly isn't a, you know, a very good quality one because don't forget that it was using a third-party cable, but you can see here that the cable, the Mod DIY cable, was actually investigated under the microscope, and at least according to this, it's as good as some of the best 12 VHPWR cables that you can find from other major vendors. Not only that, but according to him, had a stressed it even further, it probably would have ended up melting the connectors. So, yeah, I mean, this is pretty wild here, but at least according to this, it may not in fact be user error. And he actually made a fairly decent point in the fact that the RTX 5080, if it was just user error, why aren't we seeing this happen with the RTX 5080 as well? Of course, you could maybe argue that, well, there's just not enough current that even if it is disconnected, that it would melt the connector. But still, this definitely seems to be a major issue with higher power draws. And of course, the RTX 5090 has even higher power draw to the RTX 4090. So not only is this problem maybe not over, but it could potentially get even worse. With that said, of course, they did release the 12V 2x6 connector, but now obviously this is just the cable itself. As far as I'm aware, there really aren't any changes, or at least if there are to the cable itself, it's probably very minor, but still one of the big changes was in the actual socket where you plug it in at, the sense pins had been pulled back, so it forced it to push it in all the way. But that's the thing, this actually happened even with it actually pushed in all the way. So this seriously may not be user error. And lastly for today, while AMD hasn't really shared many specs for their upcoming RX 9070 and 9070 XT GPUs, we do at least know from third-party vendors that the 9070 XT should come with 16 gigabytes of memory. Well, it looks like they may in fact be releasing a card that's even better. As you can see right down here, this story originally comes from a couple different people from the Chip Hell forums, and both of these leakers have absolutely gotten quite a bit of things right in the past. And as you can see, they suggest that there's a new card that actually features 32 gigabytes of memory. But not only that, they also claim that this card is not a Radeon Pro card, but is in fact a gaming variant, more specifically, the 9070 series, meaning we could in fact have a 9070 XT with a whopping 32 gigabytes of memory. And not only that, but you may not, if they're correct, have to wait too long for this because according to this leaker, it's actually expected in the first half of this year. Of course, that could still be a few months off, but it's not too bad. Time, as always, will tell. 
So while that does it for today, what do you think about a 32GB 9070? Is that just too much or could you always use more memory? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And as always, have a great day.